not be burned. We can experience heavy rain and not drown because your presence is there to keep us, to uphold us, to bring us out as if nothing happened, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, that we don't look like what we've been through. We don't look like what we have experienced in our lives, Lord, because you are able to make us new, God. You are able to refresh and heal and restore us when life tries to take us out, when life be life in God, as they say. You can have us looking brand new. You can have us looking fresh and crisp and shining, Lord God, like the diamonds we are, Lord. We just thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for who you are and all that you are, Lord. We worship you. We give you the glory, Father. We just magnify you, Lord. We worship you and adore you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And as we continue to allow this, uh, this moment to go by, Father, we just reverence you right now, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity again to be together as your body of Christ and to lift up your great and mighty name because you are awesome. You are amazing. You are mighty. You are our king. You are our Lord of Lords. You are our sustainer. You are our healer, Lord Jesus. You are our doctor. You are our brother. You are our friend. You are our father. And we thank you. You are everything. You are everything that we need in every moment that we need it. Lord, we thank you that there is nothing that we can get from this world that you have not given us. And we thank you, Lord, just for that, just for that reminder. We thank you that you are always with us, even though we leave you, even though we may turn our backs on you. And we just ask that you come and rest on this church, come and rest on each of the members, Lord Jesus. Have your way with us today, Lord Jesus, and let us see you. Let us recognize you in a different way today, Father God. Reveal a different part of you, Father, so we may be knowledge of something about you, Father God. Because we know that your ways are so above our ways and your thoughts are so above ours. And everything that you have done and are still doing is so above us, Father God. But we ask today that you reveal something new to us, Father God, so that we may be able to come into that moment, Lord Jesus and still have a, just have a new interaction with you. Lord, we thank you for that this morning in the name of Jesus, amen.
Good morning, Generation of Hope Church. We welcome you both in person and online. Please bow your heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for breathing life in us, Lord God. We thank you for getting us here safe, sound, and unharmed, Lord God. We thank you for those who are to come, Father. Let your glory fall and let your spirit run rampant in this place today, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for our pastor, Lord, restoring him everything that he puts out today, Lord God. We thank you for his wife, Sister Elisa, Lord God. Continue to cover her so he, she can continue to cover him in prayer, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for their sons. We thank you for bringing us to this place. We thank you for the word that will go forth. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Please stand and welcome our praise team. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Is there any believers that are free on today? Say I'm free to raise my hand. I'm free to say amen. I'm free to worship. Will the free believers make some noise? of God in spirit and in truth. Here we go. I want to clap a little louder than before. I want to sing a little louder than before.
I dare somebody just to give God a wave offering. I dare somebody just to start turning around. Well, I'm free to leave us. I'm free to worship. I'm free to dance. I'm free to praise. I'm free to lift him higher. I'm free to lift him higher. No more shackles. No more chains. No more bondage. I am free. No more shackles. No more chains. No more bondage. Thank God I'm free. I hear that there's somebody is dealing with tormenting spirits at night and you can't sleep well but I decree and I declare and you don't have to say nothing I'm not calling you out but I just want you to open up your mouth and lift up your hands and just declare God I receive my freedom on today somebody say I'm gonna sleep again You might can't relate because you can go to sleep at night. But there's somebody in here. There's somebody watching. And there are demonic forces that's taking their sleep away. I come against insomnia. I come against it now. And I decree and declare that you are free from every demonic force, every tormenting demon, every evil word curse, every imp. You are free. You are free. You are free. You're gonna sleep again. You're gonna sleep again. You're gonna sleep again. I don't know why God got me right here. You're gonna sleep again. You're gonna sleep again. You will get a fresh night of sleep. A fresh night. A fresh night. And when you wake up, you will be refreshed. You will be replenished. You will be revitalized. I'm talking about the freedom of the Lord. Free believers make some noise. Can we just declare the awesomeness of our God? Our God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep us in the valley, but he'll hide us from the rain. Oh, hallelujah. Well, let's give God a wave offering all over this place. God, you're awesome. You're so awesome. You're so awesome. You're so awesome, yeah. All together, everybody say, See, my God, my God is all. He can move the mountain. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Sing it again. Say, my God is. My God is awesome. He can move the mountains. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Hide me from the rain. Say, my God is. My God is awesome. Say, he heals me. Heals me when I'm wrong. He'll give you strength to carry on. Sing it like you believe. 
Say provider. provider. He's doing it for you, bro. Say provider. provider. Say provider. Say provider. provider. Say provider. provider. Say provider. to open up your mouth and just say provider. I don't have to know what it is that you need. But all I have to know is that our God is a provider. And whenever you open up your mouth and speak, it has to happen. So this next time you sing it, I don't want you to sing it like you're singing a regular song. I need you to sing it with some conviction, knowing that God is going to provide in every area of your life. That's all you're going to do. God, we trust you on today. When we can't trace you, but God, we declare this in this atmosphere. Say. address the elephant in the room because you don't have to have it all together to worship him there is no condemnation I mean you know your Bible listen if we could change ourselves we would have been and did it. But the fact of the matter, God changes us in the midst of us doing what God asked us to do. So I'm not gonna feel convicted about what I did yesterday, but I'm gonna lift up holy hands because there is more to my story. Somebody said, God didn't bring me this far only to bring me this far there's so much more there's so much more there's so much more and he's not done with me yet and there's somebody say he's not done with me yet i'm just talking about the awesomeness of our god he's not done with you he's not done with you daughter 
he's not done. He's not done. He's not done. That's how awesome our God is. He loves us in spite of us. You're not done with me yet. You're not done with me yet. There's so much more to the story. You're not done with me yet. You're not done with me yet. Come on, somebody declare it. You're not done with me yet. There's so much more. There's so much more to the story. You're not, you're not done with me. You're not done, you're not done. lift up our hands because we're no longer ashamed of us you know sometimes people say I'm going to come to church when I get myself together all you got to do is come and God will get you together in the midst of you lifting up your hands so somebody just declare you're not done with me yet you're not done with me yet is there anybody wanting experience you want to encounter with the Lord lift up your hands and say you're not done with me yet you're not done with me yet there's so much more to the story you're not done with for the next 30 seconds can we lift up our hands and open up our mouth and at the same volume that you were singing at can you open up your mouth and talk to the Lord at that volume hallelujah Lord come on lift up your voice in Zion open up your mouth open up your mouth Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. You're not done with me. There's so much more to my story. There's so much more to my story. There's so much more to my story. I'm not here just to pay bills be broken die there's so much more 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 Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. 
not beneath. You're the lender and not the borrower. You're the lender and not the borrower. Everything you touch, it turns to gold. I dare somebody just to speak it. Everything I touch, it turns to gold. Everywhere I walk, my feet prosperous. My feet prosperous. My feet prosperous. My feet prosperous. It doesn't matter what I'm He's not done with you yet. There's so much more to your story. There's so much more. Shout with the voice. 
voice of triumph shout with the voice of triumph if you have a victory if you have the victory I dare you to shout I dare you to shout Shout in this place. Shout in this place. Hey. You're not done with me yet. You're not done with me yet. There's so much more to the story. You're not done with me. You're not done with me yet. There's so much more. There's so much more to the glory. You're not done with me yet. Hallelujah. for what he brought you through. You, you weren't even supposed to be here. I said, give the Lord the loudest worship. You weren't even supposed to be here. Somehow he reached down and got you out of the hand of the enemy. Sickness tried to kill you, but it couldn't. That breakup almost destroyed you, but it didn't. The rumors they said about you didn't work. Yet you're still here standing after all you have been through. I'm still standing. He's not done with you yet. <laughs> He's not done with you. Yeah. He's you not put done your with me yet. And just sing it over yourself. Sing it over yourself. He's not done, done with me yet. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, come on. There's so much more to the story. Yeah. He's not done with me yet. He's not done with me yet. He's not done with me yet. Come on, y'all. There's so much more to the story. 
He's not done with me yet. He's not done with me yet. He's not done with me yet. There's so much more to the story. He's not done with me yet. Hallelujah. Can I give you my favorite part? Here's my favorite part of the whole song. There's so much more to the story. I don't know who drops you in chapter one, but they need to get to chapter five and look at how God has turned your life around. I, I don't know who this is for, and I don't know who gave up on you in your chapter one. But look down the road until your neighbor chapter 5 is coming. And chapter 6 is coming. And chapter 7 is coming. And it's a break in chapter 7. Because chapter 7 is a number of completion. And don't give up in chapter 8 because it was a new beginning. Hey, I need y'all to shout for your new beginning. I need you to shout for your new beginning. Hey, 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 I feel it. There's so much to the story. There's so much to my story. There's so much to my story. There's, there's more to my story. You ought to be getting a leap. There's so much more to my story. You hear me online? There's so much more. There's so much more to my story. You're not done with me yet. You're not done with me yet. Just play, just play. I, I feel deliverance in here. Play for about two minutes. Cause somebody about to somebody about to get out of what the devil tried. Hey, hey, hey! Like one big quiet. He's, He's not, not done, done with me yet. He's not done with me yet. There's so much more to my story. He's not done with me yet. He's not done with me yet. Come on, y'all. He's not done with me yet.
He's not done. He's not done. I don't know who walked in this ministry today and you thought it was over with. I just heard the Lord say to tell you this and he had me release it in Houston. You ready? After I say it, we go and shout and move on. He said the next five months of your life you're going to be on a winning streak. Y'all didn't shout. He said, the next five months, you about to be on a winning streak. What does that mean, Pastor Dwight? He said, every single thing that you touch, you're going to win at. Woo! Woo! Somebody shout, I'm done losing. Touch two people on your way to your seat and say, losing is not in the cards. Now somebody shot, all I do is win, win, win. I feel like somebody just got their victory today. Oh, we better stop it, y'all. We. You know what? Ah! Look at your neighbor. Say, I'm on the winning team. Team Jesus, shout. Hey! Y'all are too quiet for me today. Team Jesus, that's all. Even when I lose, I still win. I said, even when I lose, Brother Todd, I still win. Hey! What you mean, Pastor Dwight? He said, I'll work all things together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Tell your neighbor, I can't lose. Now give the Lord an early morning shout. Yeah! Online shout. In person shout. Facebook shout. YouTube shout. Yeah, hey, hey, we gotta stop before we lose it. Yeah! Tell your neighbor. Everything I touch is going to work. I don't know who need to hear that. The Lord said it's going to work. Because he said so. Woo! Oh, I got to go. Somebody put your head back like an old preacher and say, glory, glory, glory. Hey, 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 I gotta go. Cause right through here, about three, four runners gonna get loose. Cheap devil. Hey, yo. Woo. Uh oh. Yeah.
your neighbor. Say, neighbor, this next little one-minute dance is for the yes I'm going to get next week. I don't know what you've been applying for. I don't know what you believe in God for. But neighbor, I, I just want to take a 60-second dance for what's about to happen. One, two. One, two, three. Y'all better come on here. Hey! Hey! Woo! Uh-oh. I feel like some two-steppers done got nothing. Where are my dancers at? Hey! Where are my dancers at? Oh! Hey! Oh! 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 Hey! Woo! Come on, clap! Hold it. Oh. Hold it. 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 All right. Go to release it. Go. 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 that old Holy Ghost that Holy Ghost from 1980 that Holy Ghost from 85 yeah y'all they gonna talk the Holy Ghost that moved through the 70s y'all ought to lose it oh somebody shot for the old Holy Ghost I'm sick of this new stuff go on and get what God gave to your own time I'm talking about your grandma's Holy Ghost and your uncle's holy go.
mouth and say yes Lord Open your mouth and say yes Lord Open your mouth and say yes Lord Open your mouth and say yes Lord Say yes Lord Yes Lord To your will To your way I will go I will obey Yeah
can be seated. said you escaped you escaped oh you escaped you escaped yet again Woo! This all this is a heavy glory. You did have a mindset to the hot door. Woo! I love my whole Baba Man she did have a hot side. The Lord said it ain't never gonna be that hard again. The enemy you see today. Woo! You'll see no more. I gotta go, but the devil been attacking some of y'all over the last couple of weeks. And he been telling you stuff like you getting ready to die. You gonna get sick. You're about to sit the whole side. That's because he took a peek into your future. And he saw what God has for you. Hey, man, see, look at your neighbor and say, I see myself in the future. And things look a whole lot better. Oh, my, 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 see, tell them a whole lot. Woo. Clap your hands all over the room. Good Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. You know, I'm going to tell y'all like this in the days to come. You're going to have to hurry up and get to church because there's going to be a glory and a line of people Baba, she tied up a whole yard trying to get in. Oh, shy. Y'all ain't going to talk to me to feel the glory. There's going to be days when you come in church and you're just going to get healed immediately. I heard the Lord said, I ain't asking you for permission, neither. Oh, tell me how he just going to do it. Mm. Come on here, somebody. Some of y'all going to walk through the door broke, and you going to walk out wealthy. Woo, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, clap those. Ah, I felt the glory. Clap those hands again. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Well, if you're happy to be in the house of the Lord on today, amen, would you uh, go ahead and look at your neighbor and say, you look good today. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And look at the other neighbor and say, you look good today. Uh, you look like somebody has kept you, amen. Uh-huh, prophesy and say, you don't look like what you've been through. Uh-huh, come on, somebody. Amen. I'm trying to figure out how you getting older, but you looking younger. Ah, uh, y'all. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. The Holy Ghost will keep you. Amen. Hallelujah. You looking better and better every single day. Come on here. There's just a glow about you. There's something about you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, let's thank the Lord one more time. Clap those hands. Do we have any first-time guests in here on today? Please lift your hand in the air. First-timers, amen. Keep your hands lifted. Keep those hands lifted. Uh, Generation Hope, let's go greet all of those that got their hands up. Keep your hands up. Stand and keep your hands up so we can we can acknowledge the you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me. Love's the Jesus in you so easy, so easy, so easy. Yeah. He's 
So we did a love. The smile on my face loves the smile on your face. The smile on my face loves the smile on your face. So easy. So easy to love. So easy. You're so easy to love. So easy. So easy to love. So easy to love. Say the Jesus, the Jesus. couple drove from Dallas, Texas to Houston, and somebody had drove as far as San Antonio uh, to Houston. That's a five-hour drive, and just to be in the service of the Lord. Amen, somebody, and praise God. Some of y'all live down the street, and I got to come knock on your door to get you to church. Amen, but we thank the Lord. He met us in a mighty way in Houston. Everything in Houston is big let y'all know right now and God met us it's a blessing to go to a whole nother state and people show up and fill that place up in another state you ought to thank Lord that you're part of a national and a global church y'all ain't saying that to me we are not just restic restricted to Georgia but God is stretching out our borders for us to expand. Amen. You ought to say amen right there. Amen. And when God expands us, he's expanding you. Amen. There's no way that God can bless us and then not bless your house. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we thank, what, thank the Lord for what he has done. Amen. There in Houston. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to thank all of those ministers that have traveled traveled with us our team stand if you travel with us to Houston stand if you travel with us to Houston amen 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 thank you thank you all they came and got their own plane tickets and own hotels and came and had a I didn't know there were some comedians in the bunch but we man we got 
have some real comedians. Amen. And we thank the Lord. It's good. I believe in fellowshipping with people outside of church sometimes. Amen. You ought to be able to sit down and eat with people outside of the four walls to find out who they are and laugh. You live on planet Earth like I do. Amen. And so we thank the Lord for all of those that came. Our next night, I hope, will be in Minnesota. Everybody ought to shout right there. I am trying to get a large delegation to go up there with me this year. Last year, we took about, uh, it must have been about 10 people up there, something like that. And uh, this year, I want to try to double that. I want as many of you that can, let's go up to Minnesota October 20th for one night. For a night of hope there, God's going to move. And so we're going to start mobilizing and getting people together. Y'all don't hear me today. Amen. That is where I was born and raised. And so I want to bring as many people as we can up there. I'm going to say it till you get mad. Amen. Get you up there. Amen. And you ought to go somewhere different. Experience the world in other places. Amen, somebody. Somebody say, Night of Hope, Minnesota. October 20th. Amen, amen, amen. Well, we thank the Lord that the Lord has been faithful to us in the area of our giving. That was... Amen, amen, amen. He's been faithful to us in the area of our giving. How many know that God is expanding and growing the generation of Hope Church? Amen. Amen. And we thank the Lord that whenever you give, whenever you sow into the house of the Lord, it goes to the work and the building up of the kingdom of God. Amen. Many of you would know I started, we started this ministry inside of my barbershop. Amen a local Tuesday night Bible study and handing out food and praying for people. Y'all ain't saying that to me. We didn't just walk into nothing. Didn't nobody hand us nothing. We weren't handed million dollar facilities to walk in. No, we had to start from scratch because there's a different anointing on a builder. Y'all ain't saying that to me today. And most of the people that are mad at you are mad because you started from scratch. Come on, somebody. They're, they're mad because they got something from somebody else, but you started from scratch. I don't, I don't know if you know what I'm saying to you. That is completely different. Amen, somebody. And the Lord has sustained us 10 years, amen, 10 years of ministry. And I'm along for the ride for the next 10 years, amen. Praise the name of the Lord and how God is going to stretch out our borders. Amen, somebody. And we thank the Lord for that. And how Elias and Malachi are going to be Generation Hope Church North and South. And we thank the Lord. <laughs> Amen. And praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank God that the Lord has plans for them. Amen. They're going to be lawyers and doctors, and they're going to be in ministry. Praise the name of the Lord. It's just in the family. Uh, I ain't going to force them. It's just in the blood. It's going to catch up with you. Amen. I tried to run until I got 21, and that thing snatched me down. Amen. I ran to a whole other state, which is Georgia, and God met me when I got here. He said, welcome. I said, I thought I left you back at home. Amen. Amen. And place me in Bible college. Your steps have been ordered. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank the Lord that every member of Generation Hope Church is a... Y'all believe that? Amen. Every member of Generation Hope Church is a... Amen. And anything above that would be your lavish giving or offering. Amen, somebody. We thank the Lord. If you make $1,000 a week, you owe God how much? 2000 3000 Amen. We thank the Lord that he only asks for 10% of what you bring in. Amen. I notice that if you give above and beyond your normal tithe, God will bless you even more. Amen. I believe in giving where you see yourself being. If you give crumbs and you're content just giving crumbs, and that's what you'll receive. But if you give at a level where you see God taking you, God's going to meet you right where you've been giving. Y'all ain't saying that to me in here today. Do you hear me? A tithe, everyone say, is 10%. Not five, amen. Not eight, amen. Not nine. It's 10%. Come on here, somebody. Amen. And so we thank the Lord that he is going to meet us in the area of our giving. Some of you don't play with me. You've been believing God for a lot of things. 
Amen, somebody. And the Lord is going to meet those as you are a tither. Amen. I'm really contemplating on doing a series on finances. Mm -hmm. Because I'm coming to find out it's not even about how much we make. What's the question then? The question is, what are you doing with what you make? Oh, see, you're going to throw me under the bus. And then some of y'all got the nerve to ask your boss for a raise, and you squandered what you already were given. Huh? Y'all need to learn from some of these older mamas. They, they took what they had and made it work. And if they took what they had and made it work in the early days, then why can't you take what you have and make it work? I found out it's more of a blessing to have the money to be able to get it than to wish you did have the money to get it. It's always better to know I can get it if I want it. Y'all ain't going to talk to me in it. Amen. There is an anointing over this ministry where people are buying homes. Huh? Y'all are really quiet through here. They're buying homes. Amen, somebody. They're looking for homes. Amen, somebody. They're, they're purchasing new vehicles. Amen, somebody. That's a testament that God, and this isn't about material stuff, but it's a testament that God will bless you as you tithe. Amen, somebody. Come on here, somebody. So we thank the Lord that every member of tither. This offering here is for our building fund. We made a declaration over a couple of months ago, amen, and these are the building fund envelopes, amen, and I'm asking that if the Lord leads you to give towards the building fund, we are working towards our own building, amen, somebody, amen, we thank, we thank God for this space, and we have maximized this space, and we've outgrown this space, when we first got in here, we had a little box we would meet in, it was a little box, and as the Lord started sending people, we expanded and made do with what we had in here, but now we're believing God for bigger and better, amen? We've outgrown, we're beginning to outgrow where we are, and by the way of moving into something new, we have up, um, initiated a campaign, capital campaign, a building fund, and I'm asking you that above your tithing offering, if the Lord leads you to give towards a building fund, some will give 500 some will give a thousand. I want to report to you that in just three or four weeks, we've already raised nine thousand dollars in our building fund. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing to the preacher. In just almost four weeks, nine thousand dollars because the people will sow where they believe there is vision. Amen. And if you want to be a part of that today, this is the building fund. I'm challenging some of you who are listening online and in person. Give towards the building fund. Amen, somebody. And this is your regular tithe. If you need to offer an envelope, it should be in the back of your chair. Uh, we have our regular uh, giving envelope as well as our building fund envelope. Amen. These two envelopes you should have. Make sure you fill your name out legibly so we know who you are. Um, if you're giving in person, please put your government name. If you're giving via cash app. Amen. Put your government name. I don't know your cash app tag. I don't know who Chocolate Thunder is. Amen. I don't know who see y'all going I don't know who Dunamis is. Power. I don't y'all need to. Amen. Write your government name so we know how to uh, accredit you for what you have given. Amen. Amen. So we're giving even online and via, um, uh, through social media, dollar sign, Generation of Hope, or you could give via Zelle uh, at Generation of Hope Church One, uh, uh, amen, at, at gmail.com, amen, and you can also give, text the word give, which is extremely important. There's a several different ways that you can give. Do you hear what I'm saying to you today? Huh? Amen. If you're ready to give, you can come from all over the room and drop your tithe here, your building from here. Come on, all around the room. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Yeah.
Come on, sing. Come on, y'all. They pray that your people sold on further ground. That this this seed that they sold will go towards the building up of your kingdom now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We are now dismissing our kids for children's ministry. Amen. Parents, you ought to be shouting right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Amen. Come on. And as children are being dismissed, let's stand. Thank you. Let's stand for the reading of the word on today. Amen. Amen. I want to thank the Lord today uh, for everyone that have served so far. Amen, somebody. Um, let me share this with you. We only have one more week till we go to two services. And so you need to start picking what service you want to go to, amen, uh, 9 a.m. or 11.45, amen, somebody. Now, at 9 a.m. is going to be your uh, continental breakfast people, your early morning risers. They want to come in, get the word, and move on. And your 11.45 are for those who get up a little later, want to shout, run around, do cartwheels, and backflips. That's the service you need to be at. That's the one you want to bring your cousin them to. Amen. Amen. Somebody say 9 a.m. Come on. 11.45. First Sunday in October, we are moving to two services. Come on. You ought to thank the Lord right there. Come on, thank the Lord right there. Come on, somebody. Amen. And we're just providing more options. More options. There are those that uh, may not be able to get there here at 1145, but can come at 9. Amen. And so as we begin to grow, we're making adjustments to be able to make that happen. Amen. Amen. I resisted for many years, well, not many years, but for a little while, um, contemplating going to two services because, you know, I like everybody in one service. But everybody will still be at both services because there are a bunch of people that are want to come to 9 and a bunch that will come to 1145. And you open yourself up to reach more. Y'all ain't saying it to me. Uh, and also with that, the first Thursday of October, we're going to start our in-person Bible study on Thursdays. Huh? At 7.30. At 7.30. And that means that we're moving our new members class to 6.30 on Thursday before our Bible study. Do y'all hear what I'm saying to you? We're making some adjustments, but we're doing it because of what God's getting ready to do. Amen. Amen. And I believe that when the Lord speaks, we make adjustments. Come on here, somebody. When the Lord told me to tear down the walls in here, um, I knew it was time. And I was wondering how we would do it. And he sent everything we needed to do it at the right time, didn't he? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. And when we opened up, we said, oh, man, it's a little more space. And then God started sending the people of God. And you all started bringing your cousins and your aunties. And and we thank the Lord for that. And so now we're moving to two services, the first Sunday of October, 9 a.m. and 11.45. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. So you have an option to choose. If your friends go to a certain service, you want to be a part of that one, that's fine. That's fine. Amen. But go to the one that best fits your schedule. Huh? Amen. Amen. I want to thank the Lord for 
uh, Brother Montez. He served as my armor bearer in Houston. Come on, somebody. And did a really good job. <laughs> you know what I was going to call about, but amen. And so I want to tell you today, you're on, buddy. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to be praying for Brother Danny. He has some transitions he has to make back home to Alabama soon. And just told me this morning, and we just started getting used to him, didn't we? Amen. We're going to be praying for him in the weeks to come, and he's going to share a little more. Amen. Are you ready for the word today? I want to thank all of you that have served so far, the praise team, the Pastor Rashawn. Let's thank the Lord for Pastor Rashawn and the praise team. They did a tremendous job. And this wonderful, wonderful band, our greeters, our ushers, sound team, media team. I'm acknowledging everybody, uh, a children's ministry. If I don't, uh, I didn't forget you. I just want to acknowledge and thank you. Amen. All right. Let's uh, go to the book of Mark. My wife, uh, it looks so beautiful on today. Uh-huh, y'all ain't saying that to me. It looks beautiful today. You you weren't here last week, were you? Been? She was out of town last week in Dallas. I man, somebody, and I forgot to make mention because y'all got to shouting. And so, uh, but we thank the Lord. She's back on today. Amen. Then this past week, I was out of town, and it was just good. i tell you one thing. Um, I don't like being away from my family. I walked to my hotel room. I said, I don't, I don't like being by myself. I'm used to some noise or something, some fighting and some, some somebody telling me what to do. I ain't used to this. I ain't know what to do with myself, boy. But I, I, I realize, you know, family, you better value family. And you better appreciate the people God gave you, amen. And you better treat them right. Because you can always tell how much God loves you by the people he places in your life. Amen, somebody. Praise the Lord. One more quick uh, acknowledgement. I want to welcome and thank Brother Tim. Come on, wave your hand, Brother Tim. We miss Brother Tim. Brother Tim started out with us 10 years ago, and he came to service today. I'm so happy to see him. Amen. I thank God for Brother Tim. Amen. He's back today. Amen. Thank you, Brother Tim, for coming today. And we'll see you uh, every Sunday from now on. Amen. Just receive it. Just receive it. Amen. <laughs> All right. You ready for the word? Uh, let's turn to the book of Mark, chapter 2. And I want to add another installment in our series on today. Um, on consistency. Amen. Mark, chapter 2, verses 2 through 5. I really want you to drink deeply today uh, from this word because remember now we're talking about consistency. And if you're ever going to be great, you're just going to have to learn how not to quit. And stop walking away from stuff when you don't get your way. Why do you do that? get your way for a couple weeks and then you don't one week you walk away but the Lord is going to put a fire under you to stay put you know if you try to leave where God places you everything in your life will start messing up if you leave where God places you everything else in your life will start messing up immediately do you hear me and so today I want you to drink deeply of the word and where God has places you to be, okay? All right, let's get into the word on today. Here we go. Here begins the reading of the word. It says, They gathered in such a large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. And some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them and since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then they lowered the mat the man was lying on 
And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Uh, help me energize the atmosphere today. I want to preach from a subject. Stay until it works. Yeah. Yeah. Look at somebody else and say, stay until it works. Look back at them and say, stop leaving, stop leaving, stop leaving. May be seated. Amen. Um, let's go. So when I was a junior in high school, I had this dream of becoming a professional basketball player. Um, there's a few giggles. There's a few giggles. There's a few giggles there. Um, I was one of those guys that walked around with a bag and had a basketball in it. And um, um, I was always intrigued with basketball. And when I uh, went out for the team in junior high school, um, they had what they called the A team and the B team. Um, Y'all don't remember that. The A team or the A squad and the B squad. And uh, tryouts went well, and the report came back, and all of us lined up to see if our name was on the list and who made the team. And, you know, your pastor made the A-team. He made the A-team. And uh, before you clap, I was on it until uh, after my first few games. Uh, I missed a few shots. Well, I missed a lot of shots, all right? I missed a, I missed a whole lot of shots, okay? Um, and they, they demoted me, uh, Mr. Boyd. He said, Dwight, uh, we're going to have to put you on the B team, okay? Because this, this isn't working out. And um, I, I was about to quit. You ready? I was getting ready to quit. And, and I was like, y'all don't know who I am. And um, I swallowed my pride, okay? I swallowed my pride, and I joined the B team. And now the B team was not like the A team. Y'all know that, right? Uh, Y'all ain't saying that to me. Uh, you know, the B team was not like the A team. Uh -huh. uh, in fact, uh, people would come to the B team games to laugh. Uh, it was bloopers, you know. They... See, y'all are going to make fun of me in a minute. They came to the B-team games to laugh, to, you know, go up and do a layup, and they throw it all the way uh, across the backboard, and, and somebody that's six feet seven can't even dunk. They Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. And so I played on the B-team, and uh, instead of allowing my pride to get the best of me, I stayed on the team. And I played pretty well, and I cheered my team on. I remained consistent, and I caught the attention of the A-team coach again. And he came to me and pulled me to the side and said, Dwight, um, I'm proud of you for sticking with the team. Um, and though you really didn't like our move, thank you for sticking with the team. And here's what I'm going to do, uh, because you hung in there with the B-team, is I'm going to invite you to the summer basketball camp. Uh huh. Y'all ain't gonna say that to me. And so you'll get an invitation there, and you're you're getting an invitation because really you're not the best player, uh, but I like people who don't quit. What does that mean? Lift that hand for me all over the room. The Lord said to tell many of you today that He is about to reward you for just stay. Y'all ain't saying that. He woo, is about to reward you for just staying. Because you did not move, there's a reward for you staying put. Y'all better shout. I missed you. You better shout. You better shout. 
Can we get into the word? In the Gospel of Mark, we have uh, a very interesting story. You ready? And I, I like the Gospel of Mark's account because Mark is actually, actually to me, in this particular account, he's more detailed. Luke is more detailed throughout the entire uh, Gospels. But in this particular text, I like this account because Mark is more detailed with this account. Do you hear me? He gets a little more explicit with this particular account, a little more than Luke's account of this particular passage. You ready? The Bible says, a few days later, Pastor Rashawn, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that Jesus had come. Can I give you verse 2? Now, th they had gathered in such a large number that there was no room left in the house. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you? Not only was there no ro room left in the house, but there also was no more room left outside of the house. Y'all ain't saying that to me. So you could not stay in the house or get in the house, and you also could not get up to the house. Y'all ain't saying that to me. Uh, you ever been around a large crowd of people and you couldn't even get into where you wanted to go because traffic was backed up? Y'all in Atlanta, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Amen. They could not get into the house. You ready? The Bible says that he preached the word. You know, the word ought to just draw people. He preached so good that there was a crowd in the house you couldn't get in and outside the house. That's a lot of people in first century Palestine. Which gives me point one. You ready? Do not let the wrong people influence you to leave. Do not let the wrong people influence you to leave. Many who came to see Jesus could see this in two ways. They can wait here to hear Jesus preach and get the word over their life. Or they can listen to those, you ready? In the crowd. Tell the man, you, you, you're never going to get it. You're never going to get a chance to hear them. You're never going to get a chance to touch them. And look at all these people in front of you. You ain't, you ain't going to get a chance. I mean, you might as well turn around and go home. Uh, I know you traveled a great distance, but you're not going to gonna talk to me. You're not going to make it in. And this season, I want you to hear God's voice over the crowd. I'm amazed at the number of people, you ready, who will listen to the crowd over God. Oof, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. Uh-huh. I, I, I want to talk to people who have listened to the crowd over God. Uh-huh. Yeah, see, I, I have enough sense to know that everybody does not come to church for God. Oh, I can't get no help this morning. I, I said everybody does not come to church for God. Some come because of the crowd. Uh-oh. And you always know the ones that come for the crowd because when the crowd is gone, so are they. Y'all y'all ain't going to say that to me. And some of you can't stick with nothing because you're more invested in the crowd than working for a crown. Y'all miss me right there. I, I, I don't be so invested in the crowd that you miss your crown. Y'all, okay. I, I, I don't know who's next to you, but, but look at somebody and say, I'm, I'm going to listen to God this season. Come on, here's somebody. I, 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 I need you to stop being so easily influenced by people that are not influential. I, I, I need you to stop being so influenced by people, you ready, who have destructive lives. I, I'm amazed at the number of people 
who will bypass what your leader says and go to somebody, come on here, that has no great track record, y'all ain't going to talk to me, of anything significant ever in their life, and you take their word over God's, y'all ain't going to talk to the preacher today. Uh, and and sometimes you have to learn how to get by yourself to hear the voice of God. You cannot hear the voice of God over secular music that does nothing for you. You cannot hear, y'all ain't going to talk to me in here today. Some of y'all have been teeter-tottering, trying to figure out, should I do this, should I do that? Can I ask you a real prophetic question? Um, who is in your ear? Come on, somebody. I, I want to know who has your ear. Uh -huh. stop, stop blaming Stop blaming people uh, in your family. Stop blaming those you used to blame who has your ear because the mark of a real leader is based on God y'all ain't gonna talk to me leading them you gotta learn how to bust out of the crowd and see some of y'all that doesn't resonate with you but if you're like me if, if you live the life of rejection you ready and you never fit in the crowd you never been like they always found a reason to excommunicate you from their little cliques and crews in the church outside the church and you never you, I'm used to being by myself I don't need no crowd I, come on somebody I, when I woke up in the morning I told the Lord thank you I was not worried about who was at church. I was not worried about if you're coming or not, good. If you come, that's good. But I know what I need for myself. Y'all, I know what I need for myself. And in order to hear God correctly this season, you have to separate from the crowd. My grandma would say, the wrong crowd will take you to hell. Y'all see, y'all ain't gonna talk to me here today. Don't hang out with people that aren't going in your direction. If they don't have any dreams, huh? Any aspirations, any goals? Why are you with them? My God. What is that in that crowd that you love that you're attracted to? Y'all ain't going to talk to me here today. Some of y'all know you're not supposed to be in certain crowds, but you don't have any control over your flesh. So when the spirit is leading you, the flesh says, now hang out with them. Uh, Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Be around them for a season. All while you know the spirit is saying this ain't good for you. Mm. Uh, let's talk about self-mutilation. Come on. Because some of y'all will hurt your own selves being with the wrong crowd that you know is not for you. You ready? But because you don't want to be by yourself, you'll rather risk what God has for you and, and, and hang out with the crowd to show them that I actually fit in with you when you never fit in the first place. want to separate you from the crowd what is it about you that's different from everybody else what is it about you that stands out for a long time I just thought that people didn't like me and that wasn't the issue the issue was is I didn't fit with those crowds and because I didn't fit with those crowds sometimes you'll receive it as rejection when it's God's protection. Oh, come on here, somebody. Aha, uh -huh, yes. I, I thought they didn't like me, but God was protecting me. See, God hears the private conversations of the crowd. See, he knows those conversations they're having about you when they're, you're driving, when they're driving home. He knows the conversations they have about you when they're trying to three-way you in and be sneaky. Uh -huh. they, they, he knows the conversations they're having about you when you're not around them. And because God knows all and sees all, sometimes he don't care and he'll, he'll allow you to cry for a season so you don't get mixed in with the wrong crowd. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Some of y'all are too anointed to be with people that do not want anything out of life. How can you graduate from college and get a, a bachelor's and a master's and even be working on your doctorate and be hanging out with fools? Mm -hmm. 
God. The devil is a liar. And you also better be watch when you get in a car with. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Uh-huh. Because you can't ride with everybody neither. Because some people are driving with the intentions to kill you while you in the passenger seat. I ain't getting no help in here today. And I need y'all to come out from the crowd. You're going to shout. Sometime the crowd might be your family. Uh Uh-oh. Sometime... Sometimes the crowd might be the wrong crowd in church. Y'all are going to say that you cannot hang and be out with everybody. Why? Because God is very strategic about where he places you. Somebody shout, don't listen to the crowd. Come on, somebody shout, don't listen to the crowd. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Let's go. It's a crowd now, right? Okay. Okay. Can't get in to see Jesus. It's too many people. Huh? It looks discouraging. Huh? I'm standing outside waiting to see Jesus. People in the crowd need healing. People in the crowd are sick. People in the crowd need a word. People in the crowd got broken marriages. People in the crowd don't know what to do. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. There, there, is a very, there are various types of issues within the crowd. But there's one issue that we got to zone in. Verse 2 says, you ready? Some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four men. Can y'all imagine the crowd? All these people. And here comes a paralyzed man being carried by four other men. Can I give you point two? You going to shout? All right, let me just say it like this. Um, You need friends who are consistently a part of your journey. Okay, okay, it's going to be rough today because some of y'all ain't, you're looking at, you ain't even saying it. All right. Um, You need friends that are consistently a part of your journey. Amen, Pastor Dwight. Amen, amen, amen. Four men came bringing to Jesus a paralyzed man, which now makes him the fifth man being carried. Now, can we go? These friends knew that this man could not walk. They knew that he had to be carried to see Jesus. But this actually speaks of the paralyzed man because, you ready? Evidently, he had to be around them long enough to help them in order for these four men to want to carry him. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. All right, y'all going to shout real quick. You ready? Here it is. Here it is. God said, I'm about to send you a group of friends who ain't going to drop you. Go. Okay. Okay, I'm just trying to teach. I ain't trying to preach today. He said, I'm going to send you some friends who are not going to drop you. I I need some friends that are going to carry me when I get in the storm. I'm, I'm tired of being around judgmental friends. People that judge my circumstance and then say to me that I deserve what happened. Sometimes when you got real friends, you cannot articulate to them everything that's going on. Sometimes you just need to be carried. Sometimes you just need to be supported. Sometimes you just need a little push. Sometimes you just need a little prayer. Sometimes you just need a little hug. Sometimes you just need a little bit of kiss. Sometimes you just need somebody to say, you can do it. Go forward. And the Lord said, this, for 30 of you who would shout, leap up and sit down, he said, this is the last time you get around people who going to drop you when you need them the most. I'm 
sick of being dropped. The crazy part is that some of y'all have been dropped by people that know your secret. I missed you. I missed you. I missed you. I missed you. Some of y'all have been dropped by people that got the Holy Ghost. Y'all are too quiet for me today. I don't know. Can I talk? I need just one witness. Some of y'all have been dropped by people that you got the same blood with. Oh. Huh. Some of y'all have been dropped by people. Can we talk? That are in your same house. Uh oh, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. And the Lord says today is an end. Oh God, I ain't get no help today. Ah, third Sunday, it's a little rough. Ah, ah, here it is. He said today marks the end of you being dropped by people. <laughs> Woo! Huh? And, and it, it, the crazy part is, is um, it's. It's, it's when you dropped me. It's when you made the decision. To, I could see if I was on my feet. But some of y'all got dropped by friends when you were in the middle of the storm. So it hurt all the more because you're like, hey, man, wait, wait. I need a lift. Wait. I need you to carry me. Wait. Huh. I need some help. Wait. And and they dropped you. Woo! Um, I hear the Lord said, I am near to the brokenhearted. Mm. Mm. I am near to those who need me. Mm. I am near to those who would have the audacity right here uh, to cry out and say, God, I can't afford to be dropped anymore. Lift that hand for me all over the room. Um, Lord said, I'm going to send you four new friends. Huh? And they're going to have my anointing. They're going to never leave you. And never forsake. Oh, shut up, oh, Hosiah. They're going ha- to they have attributes of me. Mm. I'm going to send you some friends that are going to hang with you through the storm. Mm. I'm going to send you some friends that are going to pray you through. Mm. Ah, yes. I'm going to send you some friends that believe God for where you're going. Yes. I'm going to send you some friends that push you right into your purpose. I'm going to send you some friends that will trust God for where you're going. Because I'm done being dropped by people. Come on here. Who I shared stuff with. God said, this season, I'm picking your friends. Huh? Huh? He said, this season, I'm picking your friends. Huh? This season, I'm picking your friends. I'm going to choose who's going to love you the way I want them to love you. I'm going to choose who can enter into your life. Let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. I'm going to choose who's going to support you. Let me do it. Let me do it. I'm going to choose who's going to lift you up. Let me do it. Let me do it. I'm going to choose. And the reason why some of y'all keep getting dropped is because you're doing the picking. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. But God said this season, let me do the picking. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. And the only reason you do the picking is because you get impatient. But I heard the Lord said today, I am the one that's going to pick this time. He don't care how long you've known anybody. If their motive is wrong, then you just got years. And some of y'all, I don't even know why we're in this today. Some of y'all can't separate from some people because you got years in history. But if you look back through your history, their history is dropping you. 
So why are you still here then, man? Bro, why are you still here? Sis, why are you still here? If, if I know you dropped me so much, I got accustomed to being dropped. So I know you're only going to walk with me up to this point, but then leave me. Because you can't handle when God starts blessing me. But I celebrated you when the seasons went. Oh. I, I'm sick of supporting people and sponsoring them and sowing into them, praying for them. And then when my season come, you act like you don't even know me. Like, like we ain't shared nothing. Like I ain't help you. Uh, I, I heard the Lord say it this season, instead of them acting brand new, you about to act brand new. Come on, here somebody. And then rip me out the plastic while you at it because I'm sick. Come on, here somebody. I'm sick of people acting funny when they know I help them. Somebody shout, rip me out the plastic. I'm acting brand new. Rip me out the... Uh-huh. I'm acting brand new. I'm going to walk around with a brand new anointing, a brand new mantle, a brand new walk. Come on. And if you shout real loud, I'm going to have some brand new income streams. Come on. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm going to be brand new, baby. You know what it is. You know what I, 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 I done prayed too long. I'm going to act brand new. I wish you would try to hate on me at the new now. Oh, no. You had a season to walk with me. You had a season to roll with me. So, what? Uh, skirt, let me skirt right past you because you had a chance. To, somebody said, skirt. Uh, come on, let me skirt right past you because this is a season. I'm going to be on a winning streak. And you dropped me when you had a chance to carry me. Be seated. Uh, you better know I'm precious cargo. Woo! They better know that you are precious cargo. How you going to drop a diamond, man? I, I ain't no cubic zirconia. Uh, you can drop something cheap, but I'm expensive. I got expensive tastes. I like expensive things. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I have vision. I have goals. I have a mission. And I'm tired of people dropping me with cheap hands. Come on, here, somebody. They ain't got the fortitude and the tenacity and the zeal and the strength to carry what I got in me. I need the right people who going to carry me. They didn't give him up because he couldn't walk. I said, bro, we got you, man. We, we got you. And we're not going to throw you away because you can't give us the same. How many of you have people around you that leave when they feel like you can't give them the same? Because real friends know that they may not have as much to offer me, but I'm going to hang in there with them until they get in position like me. Friends will help friends. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me today. These are not friends, Lisa, that took him to the club. Go and get your wristband, bro. Coat check right there. Oh, y'all ain't been to the club. Uh, this our song, Harriet. We got to get in there. Our, I'm trying to bust the line. Oh, I got to get in there. It's my, they didn't have friends that carried them to the club. These aren't friends. You ready? These aren't smoking partners. Oh, see, y'all y'all ain't going to talk to me. Uh-huh. These ain't cut buddies. Uh, 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 uh. See, I'm going to look this way because some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, because some of y'all say you got friends, but them ain't friends. Y'all just got one thing in common. And as long as you keep doing that one thing, come on, the, you, you, you gave them the title of a friend, but what are they really in your life? That They're really a crutch uh, to your flesh, but you call them a friend to make people think that when you bring them around that they're okay to be with you. But even real people who got the Holy Ghost know that they don't mean you any 
good. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here today. They are from the, y'all ain't going to talk to me. They have a spirit on them that's going to drag you into a pit just like them. I ain't stupid. Come on, here, somebody. This is why we need some of them older grandmothers to start being raised back up. Because if you ever tried to bring the wrong person around your grandmother, she would tell you in your face, girl, what you done got into? Oh, my God. God, your grandma would say, boy, if you don't get yourself together and drop that zero so you can get with a hero, if you don't mess around and get that ain't even you, your family would tell you that ain't even you. Come on here. I'm too gifted, too anointed, too educated to be selling for a zero, a negative zero at that. It's a negative zero. Below how you below zero. Let's go. Let's go. They carried them not to get a quick fix. Let's go. They carried him. Can we talk? Can we talk? They carried him to Jesus. Real friends will carry you to Jesus. Uh, baby girl, you keep saying he the one. He, here's our test. Here's our test. Here's our test. Is, is he carrying you to Jesus? Pastor, this is the one. This is the one I prayed for, man. I, all right, bro. Uh, is she carrying you? To Jesus because some of y'all will hook up with projects and then got the nerd to call them Jesus now that's a project and leave the project by itself it was a project for them it was a project for them and now you think you got the enough Holy Ghost to fix the project uh, yeah you got to trust God to give you something that's already ready to go come on here somebody uh-huh and that's why well years ago when I wrote my list down about what I wanted in the wife that when God gave it to me she wasn't waiting to be a wife she was already a wife. y'all ain't gonna talk to me here somebody because God gave me exactly what I asked for and she helped bring me closer to Baby, this is a season you need somebody to, that can pray with you. Uh -huh. You need to get past hips and lips and complexion and curves and perfume and heels. And y'all are going to talk to me and biceps and triceps and say, Lord, is this somebody that's going to help me get a breakthrough in my life? Because when I get sick, being cute ain't going to do nothing. I need you to pray for me and get me off this sick bed. If you a real friend with your cute self. Bible says charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Don't y'all let me preach Proverbs. Come on here somebody. In other words it says all that other stuff will pass. Boy but you better get you somebody that got the fear of the Lord. You better not build your house with somebody that's just cute but God said I'll see somebody who loves me and, and look like what you want to look like. Oh. Alright I gotta go. I'm talking about you need friends who are consistently a part of the journey. Who is it in your life right now? I got to tell you, that ain't a part of your journey. How long do you think you can just smoke with them? That's a short season, and it ain't helping you. Can we go here? You don't smoke, right? How long do you think you can just sleep with them? That's a short-lived season. And while you're making all them risks, you got to watch out for disease and babies out of wedlock. And oh, huh. See, y'all are going to talk to me in here today. And, and, and for right, at least 30 people, I need at least 30 people to shout, come on, somebody, that when you were in the world, you didn't die for who you slept with or get no disease. Y'all are going to say that to me. I need some real say. Y'all are too safe for me. I thank the Lord I ain't dying for AIDS. Come on here, somebody. I ain't got no diseases. And it ain't like I slowed down. I kept going. Come on here, somebody. And God had to rescue 
at me and say, boy, you're going to kill yourself. This is why I preach every Sunday because if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side and his mercies, I would have been messed up and locked up and shut up. Come on, he would have threw away the key, but God kept Some of y'all can't shout. But you need to think about what some of y'all did last night. Uh Uh-huh. You can sink in your seat if you want to. Some of y'all know you messed up last night. Come on here, somebody. And the Lord still, his mercies are new every day. He still woke you up with your crazy, lying, confused self and say, get to the house of the Lord because you still need me to change this old, wicked man that's in your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, I was on my way to hell. You hear me? Some of y'all still trying to figure out how I make it home drunk. Oh my God. I, don't, I made it home drunk. I was so drunk. I was swerving all across the freeway. And God says, even when you messed up, I'm going to still cover you and put the car where it's supposed to go because you got a future. Uh, did my nigga go home? Shy. I need some help in here today. Y'all, y'all ain't never drank before. Uh, yes, Lord. But how, how many of y'all can remember when you was getting ready to fight somebody and lose your mind and risk it all and give them a piece of your mind? And God says, baby, stay your hand. You, it ain't even worth it. I got you. I'm going to keep you. I got a plan to prosper you. Woo! I didn't even find out I was crazy crazy until I got saved. Woo! Then I realized, you know what, God, I thank you for keeping me because at any moment I can act a fool. I can light a match. I can do something crazy. And I started thanking the Lord that I was not where I used to be. I got to go. Some of y'all should have been in jail doing 10 years right now. Oh, but the Holy Ghost kept you. Come on, you better not be sitting up in here sleep today, acting a fool, acting crazy, running around like God ain't on your side. You should have been. They should have threw away the key a long time ago. You should have been on strict visitation. Come on here. But the Lord says, no, I got a plan for you. You dated that man and he was abusing you. Held a gun to your head. And you still got back with him. Because you didn't want to be lonely. But somehow God made a way of escape. And you got up out of that mess. And the person that tried to kill you is now in jail. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. How dare you come to church like God ain't done nothing for you. Like he ain't never moved you out of a place of despair. You ought to take a 30 seconds and open up your mouth and thank the God that kept you. I'm trying to behave because I got to get through this word. I got to get through this word. But I need 30 people to shout, God, thank you for keeping me. Go. Be seated. Could have ended there, but we can't because we got to give you this next point. I don't want you to just shout. I want you to know why you shout. You don't just go home and say, we shout, and that's it. No, you're going to know why you shout. And you're going to have notes, and you're going to have a reflection, and you're going to have memories of why you shouted, and this is, what, this is what point made me. You get to four. Since they could not get to Jesus... Because of the crowd. You ready? Let's go. They made an opening in the roof. Point three. Point three. Don't quit because one door shuts. (laughs) 
Don't quit because one door shuts. This situation has defeat all over it. These four men are already tired. You ready? Already frustrated. And they finally get down there really close to Jesus. And they can't get in. You ever been this close? This close. You went through all the right steps, all the right procedures. And it didn't work. We're that close, that close, and it did not work. Huh? No. They're carrying him, which means I got somebody else's weight. And they could have easily said, well, we tried, but they ain't let us get in. The door was shut. They could have took back going the other way. This is the difference in those who came for show and those who are on assignment. When I come for show, if it don't work, I'm gone. Y'all missed it. When I come for show, if it doesn't work, I'm out of here. But when I'm on assignment, I can't leave. Oh. Mm. All right, let me say it again because y'all didn't get it. When I'm here for show, um, if I don't get what I want, I'm gone. But when I'm on assignment, even when I want to leave, I can't. Y'all are going to talk to me. When I'm on assignment and I want to leave and I try to leave, the Holy Ghost will say, turn around and go back. Because I ain't done with you on that assignment. And I wish I had time to talk about the danger of leaving your assignment prematurely. When you leave your assignment prematurely, can I say this? Nothing else in your life will ever work. You can think it will, you can assume it will, but nothing else in your life will work if you leave your assignment prematurely. This is how I know who's here on assignment who's here for show. Because when you're here on assignment, you'll come no matter what. We got to turn you away. You just keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, because your assignment is where God puts you. But when you're here for show, if everything does not go the way you want to go, you gone and gone again, runner, track star. I'm gone. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me here today. But don't quit because one door shut. How many times have you quit because you didn't get the results you wanted first? These men are, you ready? These men are so consistent that they said, well, we came too far to go back. That ain't just them. Some of y'all, you came too far to go back. Uh, I ain't getting no help in here today. Huh? You came too far. It's too far back there. I'm already... I'm already here. The betterment of my life is already happening. I'm already growing, maturing. I, I, why, well, I'm going to go back to smoking and drinking and laying around now. I got to unravel everything God did for me to go back into the past, to go back into the past. So I got to strip myself of the newness to go back into the past. And there's nothing in the past you really need. And why do you keep contemplating going back if you would remember the tears you had in the past, you wouldn't think about going back. This is a problem I had with the children of Israel because even when they were brought out of years of captivity and slavery and they were in the desert with Moses, they got so thirsty. They said it was better that we go back to Egypt. 
The devil is a liar. You want to go back to being told what to do, to being whipped and beaten? The devil is a liar. And that's just like how some of you are. When things aren't working your way, you are, I could have stayed with Bobo. I could have stayed at that job. I got to stay. Nah, God moves you out of there so you can move on with your life. You better not go back. And don't let disparity and loneliness and insecurity make you go back to your past. You saw your ex in Kroger. You started eating healthy salmon whole foods. Buying some kale. Trying to make you some kale salad. And uh, you ran and there he was. <laughs> it was a movie theater. He was just walking towards you. Boom. 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 And for a moment, you stopped and said, I, I might go back. But then the Holy Ghost woke you up real quick and says, no, remember, um, get past how it felt. How I go home. Get past how it felt. And remember how they were a liar. Remember all them sleepless nights? You know, the Holy Ghost will wake you up so good. You'll get back in the car, but like, what in the world was I thinking about? Don't quit because one door shuts. So let's go here. Let's go here. Um, you ready? Um, they start opening up the roof. Um, it's hard to kill consistency. Uh -huh. All right. Uh -huh. Can I give you B clause of four? They made an opening in the roof, Brother Todd. Point four. Can I go here? Consistency will open up other doors. Whenever one door is shut, consistency, consistency says, now nah, I'm going to open up this for you. And then I'm going to open up that for you. And I'm going to open up three more doors for you. And the door that got shut, you ain't even going to remember because of the new three that are about to open. I'm prophesying to you now. The next four doors that are open for you, you ain't even going to remember the one door you wanted get shut. Hey, somebody shout glory. It's about to open. These men are so consistent that they begin to make an opening in the roof. I got to go now. And I thought, can we talk? That's exactly how consistency works. When you remain consistent long enough, it opens up more doors. Oh, Jesus. They stayed there so long to find out that we got more options now. Because the window won't work. We can't get in through the door. You ready? You ready? Let's look at all our other options. And that's exactly what consistency does. I went through a phase in my life where I got tired of not getting any bookings. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I got tired of not getting any bookings. Felt like I need to be preaching across the world. You know how we get. Oh, they don't know me. They don't need me. They didn't, you know, I wouldn't get no bookings. Not just as dry, nothing. Dry season. So I said, I'm going to start using my phone. I'm going to make my phone my platform. I'm going to preach through my camera on my phone. And whoever receives it, receives it. And I start working that little Android. I start standing in front of the garage, standing on the side of the house, going to the park. Standing in front of the garage, going to the park, standing in front of the house, standing from the garage. I didn't care about my background. Standing from the house, standing from the garage. And I worked that phone so much that God, he, he started sending people from videos. I kept working the phone. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here today. I, I remained so consistent with the phone that God says, I'm going to open up doors to the phone. I'm getting bookings. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I'm getting bookings through the phone. Now, I've been doing inspirational videos 
for at least five years. Been doing lies for a long time. But it weren't working like I wanted to at first. I used to get two views, two likes. And I'd be like, wow, God, I done prepared a whole sermon and ain't nobody listening. And the Lord said, stay consistent. Stay consistent when they're not listening. Stay consistent when they are listening. Stay consistent when they're not listening. And sooner or later, the views went from two to thousands and thousands and thousands and roll over and thousands and thousands. And I ain't, I ain't magnifying views, but I'm saying if you don't know nothing about consistency, you better watch me. Come on here, somebody. I had a number of times to quit and to give up on what God called me to do, but God started opening up other doors. I didn't know a bunch of people would come through videos. I had no idea in a million years that God would send a bunch of people to our church by them being inspired by videos. I thought they would hear a sermon and go invite other people. I thought they would hear a sermon and invite more people. But God started sending people from different states and countries, come on here, through videos. I, I was checking the church P.O. box and uh, they were sending me seeds from Canada and Iowa and y'all ain't going to talk to me today. And, and, and I, I, I ain't do it for that reason. But the Lord says when you remain consistent, I also will attach an income stream to your consistency and for at least 40 of you who would jump and shout he says you got three new income streams because you've been consistent over the last three years Woo! now I gotta give you this when we gotta go Consistency, point five, is a ladder. <laughs> Consistency, point five, is a ladder. Somebody say, who's holding my ladder? Consistency, number five, is a ladder. I forgot to tell you how they got on top of the roof. I forgot. I forgot. I started preaching about them being on a roof and forgot to tell you how they got up there. Or maybe I meant to wait. Yeah, that's it. I, I meant to wait to tell you how they got up to the roof. They got up to the roof, Sister Kyra, because consistency was a ladder. You ready? What if I told you um, that consistency is taking you higher. This season, there are some people who don't want to see you go higher. But your consistency set, can says, you're already up there. And most people who don't want to go higher are those who will never pay the cost and understand the value of remaining consistent. I was in college for almost 10 years, undergrad, grad school. And what I found out is that if I remain consistent, then I'll finish. Because consistency is a ladder. It's a bridge from where you are to where you're trying to go. And I don't know who's been trying to burn your consistency, burn your ladder. But God is saying as long as you allow them to burn the instrument that I use to get you from here to there, you'll never get higher. And so this is why there are so many people that don't like you and hate on you because they see you going higher because of your consistency. And this, this is not a visible ladder. It's an invisible ladder. So every time people see you, they'll see you in a new position. Yeah. Yeah. They'll see you in a new seat. See you in a new home. See you completely healed. It's a ladder. You can't see it, but I'm there. And so God leaves a mystery to them. And they wonder, how did sister so-and-so get there? How did brother so-and-so get here? And they didn't know that while you remained consistent, there was a ladder you kept climbing. 
step after step. And here's our, here's, here's, here's the only challenge you got. This is the only challenge you got as you climb. The only challenge you got as you climb is to never come down. You don't come back down the ladder to try to bring inconsistent people with you. If you come back down the ladder trying to bring inconsistent people with you, then you'll stay down there on their level. And this season, you have to wave at people at a distance. Somebody say, hey, hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, how you doing? Uh, uh, come on, say, hey, hey, how you doing? Say, say I- I'm too high up to come down, but I'll wave at you. I've been through too much hell to come down there. I wave at you. I'm done with my baggage claim season. I'm in the air now. I wave at you. I'm on the roof now. I wave at you. And I'm not being puffed up. I'm not being prideful. I'm not being a know-it-all. I just ain't on that level no more. I'm not, I'm not on the valley no more. I'm really on the mountain now. And you can get up here too if you remain consistent. But know that while I'm climbing, I went through some clefts, had some demons to fight, some enemies. But I'm here now. Somebody shout, started from the bottom, but now we're here. Now let's go. What's even interesting about this is that they're they're climbing and they're not even carrying their own weight. You know how hard it is to climb up carrying somebody? I got to maneuver and adjust. Uh, uh, to just just get you to the top. Which means that I'm willing to carry up somebody else's weight because this ain't about me. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. They're carrying him up a ladder and it's, it's not them that need healing. I'm doing this for bro and them. I'm doing this for their family. I'm doing this so that they can succeed. I'm doing this because I want to see them prospering one day. I'm doing this because I believe in their future. I'm doing this because maybe I used to be low like that. And I don't forget about where I came from. Let me, Martin Luther King's favorite song, if I could help somebody along the way. You're not a real good leader until you bring somebody up with you. Why am I going to get all the way up here and not bring you? These men said, even if we don't see Jesus, we want you to see him. So, we're almost there. They start, they start lowering him down. Lowering him down, lowering him down, and he's in the middle of a meeting, and and Jesus looks up and he sees a man coming down from the roof. I see something I ain't never seen before, and the man that they're lowering down can't walk. He's on a mat. And Jesus sees him coming down. And, and he gets right there at Jesus' feet. Something softly. And then Jesus looks at him and says, I'm not even going to heal you because you want to be healed. I see the faith of your friends. Be 
because your friends wanted you to be healed. Pick up your mat and walk. All because of his friends. They helped him get to Jesus. And everybody in the meeting was astonished. Because here it is, a paralyzed man walks away because of the faith of his friends. Lord told me to tell you that consistency will always be rewarded. You may not be paralyzed. I don't know what your issue is. But I got enough faith to believe. God has it, and he's about to send you the support of the right people. I need four men. Come to the stage. Four men. Quick, come up here quick. I need y'all to just carry me. Side to on the other side. Send me up straight. Just keep me like this. All right. I need you to do something, but don't drop me. Try to walk down the steps with me. Don't mess my back up. See? And carry me around. You're going to have to make it work. It's tough, but you got to make it work. You got to find a way. You got to find a way. You got to find a way. When Jesus saw this, you got to understand that their muscles were already tired. They're breathing hard. They're frustrated. But Jesus says because your friends had the faith to carry you. When their muscles wanted to to give up, he says, I'm going to heal you because of the effort they put in. And I don't know who this word is for today, but God says, I see the faith of those that have been praying for you. And I'm about to heal you because they brought you to me. Let me down. He was, he was wobbly, but then he started to get his strength. He started to feel his muscles and his legs working because when God heals you he restores everything that was out of order and today I want to tell somebody just like these men carried me that God's about to send you some people who are going to carry you with your issues and they're going to love on you and they're going to believe God for you. And they're going to pray and intercede for you. I think you need to open up your mouth. You need to open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Let's thank the Lord. Open up your mouth. And I hear the Lord say, I need you to stay until it works. 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 I know it's going to get tough. But I need you to stay until it works. I 
I need support. I need help. I need a push. I need love. But stay until it works. Come on, look down the aisle at your neighbor. And say, stay until it works. Come on, say, stay until it works. Stay until it works. Stay until it works. Stay until it works. Don't throw in the towel. Don't you give up. Don't walk away from your dreams. Stay until it works. Stay until it works. Come on. Stay until it works. Stay until it works. And if you stay until it works, you're going to see results. But I got to stay until it works. If you know that you were getting ready, be honest, if you were getting ready to walk away, get down here to this altar. If you were about to walk away, get down to this altar. No shame, no condemnation. If you were about to walk away and say it's over with, I quit. I give up. I'm going to give it in. I'm going to walk out. I'm done. You need to get down. There's more of you. There's more of you. I, you was on the verge of... If you was about to end it, you need to get down. Don't play with me. I was done. I was through. I was finished. But God... I tried to run. Oh. Come on, come on, come on. But God wouldn't let me run. When I tried to run, I ran right back into him. I ran right back into God. He was already at my next destination. Y'all, come on. Come on closer. Come on closer. Come on closer. If you know I'm talking to you, if you know I'm talking to you, you need to get down to this altar. I was about to give it up. I was done. I was finished. I was through. I said, no more. I'm done. No more. I'm done. Oh, God, who is this for? Woo! Those of you that are in your seats, I need you stretching your hands towards those at this altar. If you only knew the hell they've been, ah, they've been through. Shower down. Spirit, Lord, rain on us, breathe on us. Stay until it works. Oh, this is going to happen fast. The devil was tempting many of you to walk away from where God placed you. And you let the devil get in your mind. And you already know your way never works. But today, when I lay my hands on you, he's gone. Breathe on Shower down, shower down. Sing your spirit, Lord. Sing your spirit, Lord. Stay until it works. Stay somebody breathe. Stay until it works. Shower down. Stay until it works. Stay. Stay until it works. Oh, 
Somebody breathe on us. Let your glory feel Stay until it works. Stay until it works. Let it all come And it will work. And it will work. And it will work. Purify our hearts. Surround us in this place. God said, you're going to stay put. Everything you need is here. He's going to make a way for you. And all shall be made new. We are your family. We are your help. You're going to stay until it works. And your daughters are coming, he says. Shower down. And your daughters are going to come. They're going to move here with you. I'm restoring everything that you never got. Whatever your mama didn't give you, you're going to give to your kids. I prophesy by December, the whole family going to be here. Yeah, they're going to be here. And you're going to have the resources to take care of them. I'm done running. I'm done running. I'm done running. I'm tired of running. I'm done running. I'm done running. This is the last Sunday I run. Lord, I want to be committed to you. I'm going to be dedicated. I'm done running. I am put. I'm going to stay put. I'm going to stay put. Yeah, this is for you. I'm going to stay put. Oh. 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 The Lord said, don't go back home. Stay. I'm going to work it out. It's going to work out this week. Tanti Doha. Lift your hands. It's coming, y'all. Stay put. Stay put. Don't move. Don't move. It's all coming together. Lord, we want you to shower down. Shower down, send your spirit. Softly, band. Somebody keeps trying to break you. But whoever it is, I bind the hand of the enemy that they got to leave your life. You let them back in, you shouldn't. God said it's over. They keep trying to break you. Come in and come out. Come in and come out. It's over with now. That's what's trying to tear your heart apart. But today, complete restoration, and they are now removed. six months your life is going to be in the best place it ever been but it's depending on you staying planted so even as I get ready to lay my hands on you the enemy trying to come and distract you from your call the David call as I lay my hands on your ears everything you hear Everything you hear, 
will be out of God's word. You're going to read the word. You're going to touch the word. You're going to trust God for better. God's about to restore your whole family, your children, your daughters. But you got to stay put. You can't run from God. It's on you. Your mama prayed over her womb for you. You got to preach. You got to sing. You got to teach. The devil's trying to influence you to make a detour. But God says you ran right back in the beam. So when I lay my hands on you, when I lay my hands on you, not only is your money going to be released, but your mind will be released to handle what's next. Even as your pastor, I lay my hands on you today as a son confirming that you are in a safe place. Oof. Now, by Wednesday, you're going to get a call that there's going to be four things that are open for you because God was testing you today to see. And God says, not only am I going to ah, open it for you, but I'm going to give you extra in addition to what's coming. But I'm going to trust you to help build my kingdom. And your podcast needs to be about me, not them. So your guests need to be regarding being righteous and holy. And God says, I'll make your name known across the nation, but you got to be willing to submit completely to me and let go of the past. God says, the Holy Spirit is within you. Now receive it. When I lay my hands on you, it's over with. Oh, oh, it's over now. Woo! I'm going to just do this. There's a gentle blow. The Holy Ghost wants to just do a gentle blow. You are an intercessor. And people have taken you for granted. But even as I blow, there's a new wind. There's a new wind. There's a new wind. The Lord said, your latter days shall be greater. I see some money, something's being held up, but today I, I pray and lay my hands on you to declare that it shall be released. And there are at least four or five family members that got to get away from you. They're just around you to get stuff from you. I don't know who it is, but God says today I release you from their bondage and the words they said, and I release over you an anointing of favor to prosper. These are millionaire hands. You know that? <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Ooh. You got millionaire hands. <laughs> She got millionaire hands all over you. We done. We got a few. Uh, Elijah. What's today? The, what's today's day? Listen to me. By January 24th, you got into January 24th, the Lord said. I don't know what that's for. You have until January 24th to bring it all together because there's going to be a level of favor added to your house you've never seen before. Oh, my Messiah. You guys, after you, after it comes together, there, there's going to be three things that open up for you, and you're going to get more opportunities as you could imagine. Hati de Bahasaya. Oh, by January 24th, bring it together however it happens, because God's waiting to open up that window to give it to you. Ah, and she knows it. Let me lay my hands on you. I know you don't speak English and it's translating for you but hear the word of the Lord I see her being a part of our ministry to do international work 
We're gonna go and get a delegation of people in what country? You? Benin. My God, that's a door God's gonna open for us. When you came, God opened up the door to Africa. Somehow, it's gonna happen. When I lay my hands on you today, you're gonna feel the anointing of God. And God's gonna give you supernatural insight, even when you don't understand. Supernatural insights coming into you even now. Oh, the Lord said, you gotta watch out for wolves. They're trying to come against you and get you. But I'm protecting you. ministry in you and it's going to come to pass very soon <laughs> Ooh. I speak prosperity over your business and over your son you've been having some challenges with your children but God said today it's all going to be well you had a real rough week I even see the Lord you, you were nervous something happened this week but God said, all is well. All is working out. <laughs> there's a scream. There's a wail. There's something that's got to come out. The devil tried to attack her this week. But you better take your hands off of her. Oh! 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 says go forth you're not going to be in need of anything come this time next year financially I know it's tough right now but the Lord said stay with it until it works don't give up you're almost there ah in Jesus name oh you're almost there saying you're moving into a season of royalty like Esther where whatever trap they try to set for you they're gonna fall into themselves now God said I'm about to bring out my choice wine and it's you that today God is about to move you into a season of divine favor Around the month of March and April, there'll be talks. You'll be in conversations, if not now, about buying your own home. And there's gonna be down payment assistance and you're not gonna have to come out of pocket for nothing. And God said you need to pick at least two or three cities you wanna live in because not only am I gonna place you there, 
but I'm going to raise you up to have investment property too. <laughs> hands lifted. Oh, hands lifted. Y'all stand behind us too. licensed you as a minister it had to be about five years ago and today the Lord says he wants you working in his church again God said he misses you serving in his church so I'm just going to lay my hands on you and reaffirm what we did five years ago lift your hands for me the call of God that is on your life shall not return void. You would do everything the Lord says you're supposed to do. Ha! Oh, shut. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pray. Pray. Come on, let's thank the Lord. Lift your hands. Stay until it works. There's nothing to be said to you but just make the right choices. Sound decisions, says the Lord. Every decision you make, the Lord says, use wisdom because it affects your future. And you've been consecrated unto the Lord to be a leader in this generation like Joshua. In Jesus' name, I pray over your life now that you will succeed in everything you do in school. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, now my Messiah. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for what he's done on today. If there's anybody in here, matter of fact, everyone just repeat after me, say, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I accept you into my heart as Lord and personal Savior to renew and to guide me. Satan, I denounce you. You have no power. 
no authority over me. Jesus, I now live for you. If, amen. Lastly, if there's anybody in here, anybody in here that would say, Pastor Dwight, I need a church home. I need a church home. That the church and the doors of the church are open. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's thank the Lord for Brother Montez. Amen. Come on, y'all. Y'all better thank God for me. Come on. Amen. God, my God, anyone else as we acknowledge them, anyone else that, that come down here and say, I want to join the church and be a part of the ministry, look at your neighbor and say, if you need me to walk with you, I will. Come on. If it's wrong to be out of church, it's only right to be in church. Come on. Look down the aisle and say, are you a member of the Generation Hope Church? Come on. Are you a member of the Generation Hope Church? If not, let's come on down. Join with me. Come on, come on, come on. You ought to bring them down, so you need to come on. Amen. Amen. Well, let's thank the Lord that two have come on today. Come on, that two have come on today. Again, I'm just going to let them say their names and what drew them to come on down real quickly. Come on. Montez Wilson, um, basically it was just time to make it official. Um, kind of love my assignment this weekend as well. Amen. He said he loved his assignment this weekend as well. Amen. Praise the Got two brothers. My God. My name is DeMarco Smith. Um, this is my third week coming to this church in, in a row. Um, the first time I came, God was like, are you going to go? Are you going to join? I was like, well, God, I need a, little, a couple more weeks to decide. So and this, this is the third Sunday. So I was like, well, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I put on, I put on, my, I put on my blood of Jesus red polo and made it official. Hey, Amen. Let's thank the Lord. My God, let's thank the Lord again for these wonderful brothers that have come on today. Um, Brother Michael, you're going to lead them and, and pray with them, amen. Maybe Brother Jacoby can pray with one brother, you take the other, amen. I think, Lord, we got men in place, amen, somebody. Uh, I'm just thankful, man. Come on here, somebody, amen, amen. Montez, boy, he don't know he about to be working and he's so he's so smooth I got it past it on him <laughs> that's I got it I like him I love this brother too thank you for joining amen you'll follow brother Michael amen amen let's thank the Lord my God amen let's get ready to receive our closing announcements um if you didn't have an opportunity to give, you can give at dollar sign Generation Hope Church, or you can text the word give. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's receive us, Sister Kyra. Good afternoon, Generation of Hope. I just have a few announcements. Join Pastor Dwight today in Fedville to attend Victorious Believers Church in Fedville, Georgia. Um, services begin at 345, and we are going to support Pastor Jared and Ke Kelly Lewis, which is one of our worship leaders. See Brother Joseph for details and the exact address to get there. Which will you attend? We have a double shot of hope starting next Sunday, October 1st. Our first service begins at 9 a.m. and the second service begins at 11.45 every Sunday moving forward. 
to all of our new members. Our next new member cohort begins the first Thursday, which is October 5th, right here. And it is before our in-person weekday Bible study. That's Thursday, October 5th. Do you have the heart and life of a worshiper? Come on and sing with the praise team. We are having auditions for the praise team this Thursday, September 28th at 7 p.m. here at the church. All parents, you must officially sign your children in class each Sunday they attend. Even if they have attended before, all parents, need to provide the teachers with a good contact number in case you may need to be reached at your child for your child during service singles please join us in october as we are going to see kirk franklin please see sister moshe or sister kim to sign up at the service we have a home buyer seminar which will be held right here at the church October 14th at 10 a.m., breakfast will be served. Last but not least, please start your mornings off with us in prayer at 6.30 a.m., Monday through Friday, and meet us this Tuesday night for Bible study at 7 p.m., the same Zoom link. Please stand as we receive our benediction. Father God, Lord, we thank you, Father, for the word that went forth today, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you for reminding us and putting it on our spirits to stay until it works, Father. Lord Jesus, whatever we need to stay in, I'm sure you have already touched us. You have already awakened that part in our souls. And Lord Jesus, I just thank you for a spirit of consistency that is falling even in this very moment, Father God. Give us the strength. Give us the fortitude, Father God. Give us the determination and the motivation, Father. Holy Spirit, rest on us when we think and feel as if we need to walk away. But instead, Lord Jesus, we thank you for faithfulness, Father. We thank you for making us faithful to the task that you have given us, Father. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for strengthening us on the walk for consistency in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the word that went forth today and the lives that you touched today. Lord Jesus, I thank you for those who have joined the ministry and those who have joined the kingdom of God. We thank you this morning for salvation, Lord Jesus. And we ask that you just keep us as we move forward in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You guys have a great day.